So Universal gave us some huge updates about the next Jurassic World film. So prior today, what we knew was that it was written by David Cope, who is a long running screenwriter. He wrote the scripts for the first two Jurassic Park films back in the 90s. So going back to that original writer now, he was adapting books back in the 90s, and this is an original idea from him, but it is going back to that early talent. It's being directed by Gareth Edwards, who directed Godzilla from 10 years ago, Rogue One, and the creator from last year. So he's a director that has a, a really good eye for things. I actually think dinosaurs are the best monsters because they actually existed. Like a lot of the crazy monsters in films, you can console yourself by saying, yeah, but it's not real. Whereas with dinosaurs, you can't do that. They were real. Like it makes it more scary. We know that Universal was very excited about this script, so much so that they wanted to hire a director that also loved the script and just wanted to shoot it and then didn't want to rework everything. So like David Leach was in talks to make the film, but he had to pass on it because he would have wanted a little bit more input on the script and they just loved the script. They wanted to make it happen. Gareth Edwards loved the script or liked it enough to want to make it, thought he could bring his visual flair to it. and. I like that because it sounds like they have confidence in the script. Stars Scarlett Johansson as well as Mahershala Ali. And it's it's filmed. They've already shot it. It comes out next July. And today we got the title Jurassic World Rebirth. Not only did we get the title, though, they also gave us the official synopsis. I'll just read this to you. Five years after the events of Jurassic World Dominion, the planet's ecology has proven largely inhospitable to dinosaurs. Those remaining exist in isolated equatorial environments with climates resembling the one in which they once thrived. The three most colossal creatures within the tropical biosphere hold the key to a drug that will bring miraculous life-saving benefits to mankind. Kind, And then finally, they gave us two different pictures from the film, one of them with ScarJo in some fields and the other one with Mahershala Ali holding a flare in the dark. Not a whole lot of light to like go off of with. <laughs> yep, that's what ScarJo looks like. And she looks serious and concerned. And likewise, Mahershala Ali, that's what he looks like. Probably trying to distract a big gigantic dinosaur with a flare as we have seen in this franchise before. So the set photos themselves, I mean, anytime they kind of release stills like this, generally speaking, they're not terribly interesting for me unless it is a actual first reveal of a suit or something like that. And that's not what these pictures are. So the pictures, not very interesting to me. The title, Jurassic World Rebirth. When you look at the synopsis with the ideas of dinosaurs and biospheres where they can thrive, medical research that might help mankind, rebirth doesn't immediately, it's not clear exactly what that means in this context with what we know about them being all over the earth, but then being squeezed into biodomes or biospheres. I don't know what rebirth means, so I can't say I'm excited for it, but whatever. I, I don't get too worked up about titles. That one with what they also told us doesn't make a, doesn't say a lot to me. That'll lead us on to our plot description, where essentially we are five years since Dominion. Dominion itself was several years after Fallen uh, Kingdom and dinosaurs were all over the earth. Looks like that didn't go great for them. So they're huddling into a few areas where they can thrive a little bit better. So my first thought on that is, once again, it feels like we're moving away from the even concept of Jurassic World. Like, I, I as soon as they say, mm, but it didn't really work, or it was inhospitable, so they had to go to these tighter environments, I go, yeah, but that, that means we're moving away from Jurassic World. The whole fun concept was they're all over the world. <laughs> the, what does life look like where us humans in our suburbs, in our condos in downtown in our rural areas and dinosaurs might show up. That's Jurassic World, us living with them all over the earth. And your synopsis, what you just said there immediately went, that didn't work. And so we're going to skip over that once again, like they did in Dominion, where Dominion wasn't about dinosaurs all over the earth. It was, let's go to evil apple at this compound. Once again, now we're in biospheres, three of them. 
So my first gut reaction to that is, ah, you lost it again. Like you, the concept, the fun is Jurassic World amongst us. That That's like they did with the short film that they put up, Battle at Big Rock or something like that. You, you missed it once again. So, okay, let's move on. So they're, they're only surviving really well in these kind of three isolated areas that kind of mirror what the environments were where they once thrived. Now, does once thrive mean Jurassic Park, the island? John Hammond's islands? Does it mean that? Because those islands didn't seem to have that radical of a environment. It seemed pretty normal. That would be in multiple other places. And so the idea, like, are we saying 65 uh, million years ago? Like, is that what we're saying? Like, so try to, like the language there, I would assume it means further back and not just tropical islands because there's a lot of tropical islands where they could thrive as they did for the 20 years before they were taken off the island and thus roamed free on the earth. So I, like even that, I'm kind of going, what does that mean? What are, what are we saying there that it's so isolated in light of they existed on these islands for at least 20 years? Uh, really more than that because that, or well, however long it took before we launched Jurassic Park and then to the point where they were freed several years after Jurassic World. Um, it's over 20 years, maybe about 30 years that they existed on these islands without this being an issue. So what does that mean? Final piece in there, three most colossal creatures within the tropical biosphere hold the key to a drug that will bring miraculous life-saving benefits to mankind. So some point in time in here, we have to make the humans the bad guys. So you have them probably safely in this environment, and we have to introduce the, the element where there's some nefarious human, human greed, human ambition, human push towards scientific discovery pushes man into doing something reckless that leads to destruction, as is thematically consistent with the franchise. So Jurassic film, at some point in time, we have to get to that. And this one, it feels like it's a little bit more... Um, altruistic, light, miraculous, life-saving benefits to ma humankind sounds pretty good. If these gigantic creatures can we learn something that keeps people alive, that's a more pure motivation than I want to have a cool theme park that's real. I want to, better than that, it's better than I want laser raptors for war. Probably it's better than that. Um, but you always have to have, <laughs> that's like the recurring theme. At some point in time, the humans have to be bad. That's, I think, where the, some of the frustration in this is, is that they, they always have that human element to it, nefarious side to it, greed side to it, where it would be different and interesting to do one where there's just dinosaurs here. And the dinosaurs aren't villains. They're just creatures and creatures trying to live and survive. And they don't know that um, we're humans and we don't like to be killed in the same way. But then again, I don't think anything creature wants to die. die. So they're just doing their thing, trying to survive and they get hungry. And so they kill us sometimes and they're large. So sometimes they step on us. I think it would be interesting to do one that was just them trying to exist and us not trying to cause them to be extinct, but causing to find what harmony looks like. Without and so the the it's a disaster movie. It's no, there's not a human villain. It's just a disaster movie because there's creatures that aren't meant to coexist with us. And how do we resolve that tension? A Jurassic World, you might say, where they where world where their creatures are among us, but they keep not doing that. It's always preserves biospheres, human. So I don't know. It it it. This synopsis makes me less excited for the project. Because it feels too much like we're, we're 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 repeating the same mistakes. I have more trust than David Cope and Gareth Edwards than I do in the people that did the last several films. Like David Cope, we're returning to that you know classic guy that did the first two. I like that a lot. I like Gareth Edwards as a visual storyteller. I, I he's very good at that. So bringing his magic to Jurassic Park films, I like that. That that's very cool. My feelings on him, or excuse me, my, my feelings on this synopsis, not crazy about it. It just, it feels very much like we're continuing the, the wrong lessons from the last several movies. What do you think about the title? What do you think about the pictures? What do you think about the synopsis? Are you just done with these movies? Let me know down below. Check out my Jurassic ranking right over there. Keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.